right, it's time to rank another soundtrack, and this time I'm going to be doing Puss in Boots, Perro's Great Adventure on the NES. As usual, I'm just doing the stage themes, so there's no intro music, no ending, no boss battle. Now in this case, there are seven stages, but two of the stages have multiple segments with different music, and I included all those variations, so it actually totals up to ten songs on the soundtrack. I'll preface this like I always do by saying that this list is strictly my opinion. Everybody's entitled to their own, so feel free to leave your comments on what you think of the ranking and what you think of the songs yourself. I encourage discussion and debate. So without any further ado, let's get on with the list. Number 10, London Part 1. So this stage has three different theme songs. And this first one here is pretty upbeat, but it's kind of plain. There's really nothing about it to draw me in, and it severely lacks percussion. There are actually going to be a good number of songs on this soundtrack with no percussion, and sometimes it works fine, but for others, it doesn't. And this is one of the ones that doesn't. Number 9, London Part 2. Man, I still don't know how I feel about this one. On one hand, it's really moody and doing some experimental things with the sounds. It's interesting, but I feel like there needed to be a little bit more here. The loop ends quick, although that's not always a deal breaker. I just kind of feel like this is an intro or a build up to something. It's not so much a song on its own, just a section. I guess that makes sense in the context of the three London songs all being different sections of the same song, kind of like how the stage itself is in sections, but it's still one piece of music, and the songs don't really flow into each other too well, so I'm going to take it at face value and just call it as it is. Number 8, Ocean, the submarine portion. This one's very pleasant, and bass is very good in a low-key type of way. Especially this part at the end when it just gets busy out of nowhere. But aside from the bass, it's really just doing the same thing over and over again, and it's pretty bland in general. Number 7, London Part 3. This one has a decent riff, and you do hear it over and over throughout the song, but there are little sprinkles thrown in on top of it, usually in between all the rests because there's all these start and stop moments and after a couple go arounds the beat drops in and it kicks the song up to another level it's like all the notes are dancing with each other it's not particularly catchy or anything but it's not bad number six Arabia it's obviously trying to get that eastern sound to fit the stage which makes sense, but sometimes that's a detriment. Like, instead of coming up with something creative and original, you just kind of end up going to the well and splicing in some cliches. Now, while I wouldn't say that this song fits that description to a T, it does lean more toward that direction. On the other hand, though, it's quite distinct. It stands out from the rest of the soundtrack, but the intro is the best part, and it doesn't repeat when the loop ends. So all you hear is the rest of the song, which is pretty drony. Number 5, Ocean Boat Portion. This one sounds the part. It's got that feel of a sea shanty. And I actually like how this uses the same first couple notes from the submarine portion of the ocean level, but it's an entirely different song. So unlike London, I'd say that the two ocean songs do flow into each other in a manner that's consistent, but at the same time, they sound very different from each other. Tempo and, and everything. Number four, The West. It has a fitting Western vibe, nothing special, but it's a lot better than the blatant ripoff of The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly from Rockin' Cats. It has distinct sections, too. The intro is this little flute or whistle part where Pero comes rolling out on the horse and then it goes into the main riff. And although it kind of sounds like it's repeating the verse every four measures, it is, it's actually different notes. It's just the same pattern. So whether you realize it or not, it's actually changing things up a little bit. And then after several go-arounds with that, 
The end section is the opposite where it's the same notes as the verses, but with a different pattern. So there's a minimal amount written, but there's a lot more being done with it. So this is an example of the opposite of what I was talking about with Arabia, where you're going with a particular sound that fits a stage specifically, but you're at least doing something different with it, putting your own spin on it. It's not obvious, forced, and contrived. Although, like I said, Arabia wasn't too bad with that. The West was just a little bit better. Number three, Liberty. The lead is a basic three-note descending riff, but three notes always sound good, and there's a lot more on top of it besides that. You've got all these crunchy drums going, and a busy bass, and another lead instrument that's buried in the mix so it doesn't clash, but it's filling in the empty spots. You could argue that those spots didn't need to be filled, but the thing is, a lot of this soundtrack has quite a bit of empty space, so it's actually refreshing to hear a song that might have a little bit too much going on. And since this is the penultimate stage, you will have heard a lot of those naked songs up to this point. Number two, New York. The main riff you'll hear all throughout the song, but there's a bunch of other shit going on too. Like a second lead that comes in on the second half of the loop, pushing the main riff into the background, and there's a whole lot of bits sprinkled in at the end of each sequence of the riff. It keeps it from getting too repetitive. On top of that, the riff is just really good in general. I would have preferred not to have it play through the entirety of the song, but it's covered up nicely and it gets a pass for being such a solid riff. And number one, Space Wars. I mentioned this song in particular when I was doing my Throwback Thursday playthrough as being one of my favorites in the game. And that's not why I picked it number one. I like it the most because I just plain enjoy it the most all the way through from front to back. It's got a lot of energy, it's very upbeat, and it doesn't repeat much of anything. It's almost like every other measure or so is a whole different riff, and even the ones that do repeat are different variations. It's like one big melodic solo. I like it quite a bit. So that'll do it for this list. Here is a quick recap. Number 10, London Part 1. Number 9, London Part 2. Number 8, Ocean Submarine Portion. Number 7, London Part 3. Number 6, Arabia. Number 5, Ocean Boat Portion. Number 4, The West. Number 3, Liberty. Number 2, New York. And number 1, Space Wars. So that's it for this list. What did you think? What is your own opinion of the soundtrack? Feel free to leave any of these opinions in the comments. And I'll see you next time.